Yep, exactly. You know, I just wanted to go out there. I definitely wanted to get the TKO. Um, and, you know, everything played out in my favor. I mean, like, I couldn't ask for a better fight. Um, you know, as I was out there, it was just like, you know, you, you're just throwing punches. And, you know, for me, being a wrestler, to knock somebody out on their feet, you know, just completely, like, digress into boxing, it was just like, you know, that's a big moment for me. It's, that's like a game changer. It's like, okay, not only am I dangerous with my wrestling, I can also utilize my boxing, my striking, and, you know, and like right now I just feel like the sky's the limit. And how about the whole experience having this fight here at Penn State? Oh, man, it's, the fact that it was here at Penn State just made it that much more important. You know, it just made it that much more special for me. I feel like right now it's just like a turning point for me. How does it feel that you and Kobe were both taking out one another? Um, it felt great. He's somebody I always looked up to. I always follow in his footsteps. Like, literally, everything that he's done, I've done as well. You know, and everything that he, he does is just like, okay, the next step is this. This is the next step. And, you know, I want to continue following his footsteps. I want to continue to get the belt, you know, and do all the same things that he did. How about the crowd tonight? <clears throat> oh, the crowd tonight was great. You know, there was so much support. And when I was wrestling at Rec Hall, we actually saw, we actually had that same amount of love that I felt tonight, we had the same thing that we, that was back in Rec Hall. You know, all those guys that we cheering for us, you know, just, they give you energy. You know, <laughs> when you get booed, you get tired really quick. <laughs> you know, Phil wore a singlet here. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, he did? No. You know what, he never sends me the memo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I definitely was, but um, I feel like this fight was like kind of like uh, a good chance for me to actually like loosen up a little bit. And one of the biggest problems I did have in wrestling was that I was a little too relaxed, a little bit too flat-footed when I first started out. And then I started picking up the pace a little bit later on. But, you know, being out there and being out in front of that crowd, it's kind of hard to get that experience anywhere else, even when you spar. And, I, you know, I had it tonight. and. And, I, and, and at the same time, I just wanted people to see that, you know, I'm not going to go out there. I'm not stiff. I'm loose. I feel comfortable. And, you know, I, and at this point, you know, it's just I'm just going to keep getting more and more comfortable in the ring. Were you nervous before? Um, yeah, everybody gets nervous. You know, I, I feel like the little butterflies. You always, you always have it in your mind that something can happen, something crazy can happen. You know, you always want to make sure that that doesn't happen during your fight. So, you know, I, I get little butterflies every once in a while, but once I step in the cage, man, I just feel like a fish back in water. Did you hear the crowd get behind you? Or are you going now? Um, no, I definitely heard the crowd this time. Before, you know, the only person I could hear was my manager and my, and my coach. You know, I just heard them, like, yelling things out. But, you know, today I definitely felt the whole crowd behind me today. How about the natural explosion for Penn State wrestling? Um, man, I'm so happy that I'm able to – come back here and Phil's able to come back here and you know just the whole Bellator just coming back here and you know we're wrestlers we're wrestlers you know and we're pushing that to the foreground and that's that's great man I'm I'm so happy that I'm able to do that hey man that just means that we love to stand and bang you know, I just, I want people to, I don't want people to think that I'm just going to go out there and take him down. I want them to be like, okay, he's going to sit here and he's going to try and trade with me on my feet. What's it like having Coach Danielson there watching you against It felt like a wrestling match. <laughs> you know, having like him off in the corner, you know, it's just like, when I walked out there, I just, everything that he used to tell me in the corner, you know, just go out there, have fun, just relax, you know, you're doing fine. And, you know, this guy doesn't have anything you need to worry about. You know, I just kind of like, I was visualizing that all over again. I couldn't hear, honestly, the person, I only hear my coaches. And, you know, Bob Cook, he has a very, uh, he, he, when he yells, he penetrates through the whole crowd. It's the craziest thing ever. I'm like, man, I never hear this guy yell. He doesn't have like a very demanding <laughs> voice. But when he yells, I can hear him penetrate, penetrating through the whole crowd, all the chairs, everything. I hear his voice. Yeah, there's a workout that said you thought you would never be competing here again. And everybody asked how special it was. Now that it's over, you won the purpose of being a while. Can you put the reason in perspective and how special it is? 
Um, man, it's, it's kind of hard to um, put it in words. The fact that you get to come back to your hometown, you know, come back to your alma mater, and you get to be in front of the people that you know and love, you know, friends and family, and you actually get to share with them your passion. It's kind of hard to put that into words, you know, and I had a whole week this time. I was like going around, I was seeing just about everybody, you know, just kind of getting the chance to say hi to everybody, hang out with them again. I mean, like, it's, it's just like, I don't know. I can't really explain it. You were playing matchmaker. Who would you match or group up against more? Honestly, like I said before, man, I'm a complete athlete. I want to be a complete fighter. I don't care who I have to go up against. You know, I'm going to make sure that I train for them and whatever, whoever, whenever. Um, Chris Dempsey, is he's a tough guy, you know, um, and I, I know that he hasn't, like, his last couple, his last couple of years, he wasn't, like, feeling too hot, but, you know, like, honestly, when he stepped out there in the ring, he's, he's a pretty tough guy, and I, when I was throwing punches, I was like, man, are these really affecting him, you know, I was really, I was questioning myself for a little bit, but the fact that he's able to do that, you know, play that poker face, I feel like he's a really tough guy, and I, I feel like, it, you know, he has a lot more fights under his belt left to go. Um, you know, I was just lobbing jabs out there. It was the second round. I was like, okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little winded. Maybe he's feeling it a little bit more. Maybe if I could just lay the pressure on him, I can break him. And when I saw that last shot go in, and then he just sat down, it was like, you know, I'm looking straight. And all of a sudden, he drops out of view. <laughs> and I'm looking down. I'm like, okay, what do I do now? And then the ref puts his hand on my chest. I'm like, okay, it's over. Um, I'm, no, nah, I don't think I can, I'm, I'm not a big fan of cutting weight. Honestly, when I was in high school and they tried to get me to cut like three, four or five pounds, I was like, uh, let's just go up to the next weight class. Yeah. <laughs> All good. Thank you.